everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to be making our very first Halloween card of the season. Simon Says Stamp did send me over this beautiful new stamp set. Let's see what the name of this is called. I think, yep, it's called Hocus Pocus and they also sent over the coordinating dies. How adorable is this? This is so cute. I am loving the girl on the broom. Isn't she sweet? She's also on a pumpkin. This one is adorable just because I love the tutu and then the little striped stockings. I think that's so sweet. And then we have a little boy with a wand. We have a girl with the wand and I love this little magical little burst there. I think that's so cute. And then we also have some additional little kittens. We have books, we have potions. I think this is so sweet. So that is what we have for our stamp set. And what I'm going to do is I'm inspired to color. So I went ahead and grabbed a variety of Copics. And the first thing I want to do is stamp out, I think, Think, I think I'm gonna go with this cutie pie. So I'm gonna stamp this little girl on the broom out and we're gonna color and I think we're gonna have fun. I can't decide what I wanna do in terms of the background of this card just yet, but let's get to coloring and it all just always seems to come together. Okay, so I'm gonna move my Copics to the side for just a moment, bring in my mini Misty and I'm also going to bring in some 80 pound cardstock and let's go ahead and grab the stamp set. So let's open this up, bring these out. And once again, I'm going to choose this girl on the broom. I think she's super cute. So I'm just gonna place her right here. Oops. And I think that's good. Okay, here we go. Giving ample room for the coordinating guy. And then I am going to condition this stamp. And because I'm gonna be coloring with alcohol markers, I'm gonna use an ink that plays nicely with alcohol markers. That way I don't have any smearing. So I'll go ahead and just ink up my stamp. And because I wanna get right to coloring, I'm going to only stamp this one time. And then what I'll do is I'll leave my stamp right in my Misty here. And after I'm done coloring, I'll come back and stamp it one more time to get a nice dark impression. Although that looks really good. Okay, so it's right in there. We're all good to go. And now I can get to coloring. Okay, so I think what I will do is I'm going to start with the purples. And I have a couple purples pulled here. I have, oops, excuse me, I have the V000 for my lighter shade and then the V12, goodness, butterfingers today, for the darker. So I am, I'm kind of making this kind of light purple be my primary kind of color here. I think it's gonna be really fun. And I'm gonna bring in my darker shade first and add just some shading in some of the areas. I'm gonna take my time here. Now I turn, <laughs> I turn as I color. So we're gonna just, we're just gonna go with it. I like to just kind of do cartwheels with my paper as I go. It just works, it works for me. That way I can just be confident with where I'm going here. And I think add a little bit there a little bit there and that should be about good i'm also going to bring in some purple on this little band up on her hat so we'll do some there and there as well okay so that's my darker shade i'm going to bring in the lighter and i'm going to really pull this is a really pretty color and i do like these two together this color combination for some reason it's just really pretty to me, but I'm going to pull out some of those darker shadows and kind of create a little mid-tone area just by blending those together. Okay, and then swiping with a final little single layer at the end. Okay, so I'll do that. It's not much room up at her little bib to do much, but we can do bit there and same here just like that I'm liking how that looks so far and you can always come back and just layer more color on but I like to take my time with that first layer 
kind of keep it a little bit lighter. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of color over here. Okay. I'm darken this one up just a little bit by adding a little bit more color. Okay. I think I like that. So I'm going to stop there for her clothes right now, but I might come back and add in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to move on to her hat and for her hat, I don't have black in Copics yet. I'm still slowly building my collection, but because I'm kind of doing a more light kind of color palette on her clothes and such, I think that a gray is actually going to be a little bit softer here. So I think that's going to work. So I have this C5, which is going to be the darker of my two. I'm going to bring it in right on her hat here. And then down the bottom. Okay, I think that looks good. And then I'm also going to kind of come right up here and add some more as well. All right, I'm also going to do her boots that color. So going to the left and then right down at the bottom and repeating that on this second little boot. Okay, so that's where I'm going so far with that. I'll bring in my C3 and blend to create a mid-tone. I like starting with my darkest color and then going light. Um, I know there's so many ways to color, but that way just it works. It works and makes sense to me. So there we go. And then I'll finish up by doing more of a single kind of swipe for my last one. Now I'm going to come back in and probably do just a little bit more work on the hat. We'll see. I want to make sure that that blends really nice. Okay, that might be just fine. Okay, I'll do the same here. Being careful here. It's a really skinny area, so I don't have much, much room. So I want to be careful. Okay, I actually really think I like that. You can always, again, come and add more. You can deepen the shadows. But I'm going to stop there and then again, if for some reason I feel like it needs something more, I'll just come and add some more layered color on there. Okay, get these little cute boots done. So first Halloween card of the year. I have some cuties that I'm going to do this year. I'm excited. I have everything set aside. so be fun. Okay, I'm going to use this darker, the C5, just to come and do this little area here. I want to call it a buckle, but I know that's not right. But I really want to just say buckle. Okay. Okay, so far I, I think I like that. So let's go ahead and do, put my caps back on these. I'm going to bring in, oops, I had to the side. I'm going to have this E000 for my skin tone. And I'm only going to use one color to do her skin. So I will go ahead and start by doing all over color. When I do just one marker for um, both the shadow and the light area, I start with my all over color and then I'll bring my shadow in second. So I've got her little face and neck there. I've also got her little arms. Oops, I need to come back in and do her little sleeves. Missed that part. I'm gonna bring my purple back in in just a second. Okay, I'm gonna let that set for just a second because the next thing I wanna do is come in and add my shadow, but if I do it right away, I feel like it just kind of, I don't know, it spreads throughout the whole area and I, I don't get as, um, as much fine line as I like to. So sometimes I just give the ink a little bit of time 
to set. And in the meantime, I can do her little bow. Okay. And I can also do the little caps on her sleeve. Okay, right there. Very good. Okay, that's enough time. So I'll bring back my skin color. I'm going to also come and do her little ear. Forgot that. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of shadow right at the top. Just like that. And just keep it super simple. I'll also bring some shadow in a line down the left side. And then also the same over on this arm. I'm bringing it down into her hand too. Okay, so since I waited, I feel like you're given a little bit more opportunity to create some contrast there and it doesn't just kind of melt into the background color. All right, let's see here. I think next I am going to do her hair. So I have E34. Yeah, that's going to be pretty. And then I also have, oh, I love this one, Toast. I said this in another video. I really, I really like the idea of being someone who names colors. I think it's so fun. Brick beige and toast. I just think it would be a fun job. Okay. And I'll bring our toast color in first, that E34. Right along the top here, for here. And then I'm also going to do, let me get right here. She's, she's doing cartwheels. I'm also going to do it right here. Okay, then I'll bring some right under her ear and I'll bring a little bit of the shadow here. I'm just gonna play with just kind of bringing some in, giving her some little low lights, highlights and low lights, okay. I think that looks good. Then with my E31, I'm going to come and just fill in. I don't know that I need to really blend out there as much. So I'm just going to add the remaining color. Let's see, right here. And right in here. There we go. Oh, she's cute. It's amazing what adding color on their face and um, and hair does for the image. <laughs> Just like really, it really takes off after it. I feel like after you do all that. Okay, I'm going to decide to actually do a little bit of a mid-tone there. Just to kind of give it something. Okay, that looks good. All right, let's actually, while I have these out, I'm going to do the little broom. So with my E34, I'll come and go along the top. And right in between her hands ever so delicately and the back. Okay. I think I'm going to be done with that color so I can put that cap on and then finally with my lighter brown I'll come through as well. Okay. And I know that they have the the little fine point nibs for the Copics that I couldn't install on them, but I'm trying to intentionally train myself to use the brush. Um, so, so far, I can't remember when I started doing Copics. I think the springtime. So far, I'm just kind of developing my own workflow with it. So I'm liking it so far. All right, now I'm going to come back with that V triple zero. And I am just going to add just a hair more on her little outfit to kind of bump it up a little bit. Give it a little oomph. 
and just like that. Same with her little band here. Okay. I might even, I like that. I might even grab the V12, which is just my darker, and only just ever so slightly give a little bit of color back here. Okay, there we go. I like that. So now what I want to do is do her cheeks. Now, one thing I did realize about the brush is that I need to go ever so slightly because on my on the little tiny nibs you can really poke and create but sometimes if I do that with the brush it creates just big blobs so I just need to be more intentional about doing just tiny little pokes oops <laughs> deepen this one a little bit okay I think that's cute so there's her little cheeks all right Let's do, I'm going to do my darker purple because I want her cape to still be purple, but I'm just only going to blend one color here and use one color. So with that V12, I'll bring in my all over color here. Again, when I just do one marker. Okay, whoops, I had to tuck a little baby back into bed. So I lost my train of thought, but I think I was... I think I was just talking about again when I do just one color for my shadow and for my um, my little light area I just start with my all-over color okay I let that dry a little bit because I got called away but I'll make it work in a second just keep playing with the ink and it'll Okay, so now what I think I want to do is I'm going to come back in and bring in another layer right up here. Okay, I think that looks really good. Maybe even a couple. And then kind of just bring that down. Okay. Let that set for just a second. I'm probably going to play around a little bit more with this. Just to blend this all back together and deepen it there. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to bring back the V000 and again just kind of play a little bit more with this color. Only because my cape is pretty dark. I think I do like that. I'm going to very gently though bring in just a little bit more shadow that I kind of lost with all of the layering of my lighter color. So just bump those shadows back up ever so slightly and we should be good to move on. Okay. I'm really happy with the outfit now. All right, so finally, let's finish off with the last little bit of our broom. So I have two colors remaining. We have Y32 and YR21, which is hard to tell. Gosh darn, it even has the little cheat on which side is the brush and I get it wrong every time. Okay. 50-50 chance, and I just tend to mess it up. Okay, I just go too fast. Let's add our darker of the two there. Here. Maybe right in the middle here. And then kind of down here. Okay. Just a little bit there. Okay, I'm just kind of flicking that everywhere. And then with my lighter, these two are very similar, so I don't want to do too much blending. In fact, I'll probably go back in with this 
an even bump up. That was just a bit. Okay, just ever so slightly. I want that to be pretty, pretty light. Okay, make sure the right one goes on the right one. And then I'll bring my C5 in just for the little, little tie here for the bristles. Okay, there we go. All right, I think we are good to go for coloring. So what I'll do next is let's grab the coordinating dies. Actually, I was telling you, I'm gonna bring this right back in. The reason I just did one stamp originally was because, I'm gonna make sure this is in the right spot. <laughs> we don't want any ghosting here. Okay, the reason I just did one originally was because I wanted to get right to coloring. And if you do a couple layers, then you just have to wait a little bit longer. I mean, we're not talking an hour or anything, but just a little bit longer. So sometimes I just wanna get right to it. And I will add my second layer after just to really bump up the lines. There we go. Oh, she's cute. But you need to remember if you're doing this, leave your stamp in your Misty. If you leave it there, you're good to go if you do your realignment. But if not, then, I mean, it, it, to me, it would seem impossible to get that lined up again. <laughs> but that's just me. Okay, let's do the dies. So we have, oh my goodness, look at all of these. I love a coordinating die. There we go open this up. Let's get an idea of where, where she is. Here she is. I can tell by the, the broom. Oops, that's kind of hard for you to see though. There we go. Okay, I'm going to grab these little snips and let's just get her all trimmed out. Okay, and then the inside pieces and we are ready to go. Okay, so there is the die there. Ugh, so good, so good. All right, I'm gonna line that up. I think that looks good. I'm gonna add tape in just a couple areas. Okay, I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine really quickly, and then we can start working on our card panel, which is going to, let's see, I think we're gonna do maybe some ink blending. Okay, I'm gonna bring in my little baby die cut machine here, and this will absolutely fit. We don't have to bring out my big machine. Okay, I'm just gonna trim this all the way down. Place that there and grab my plate. Okay, there we go. Send this through, get this all cut out. There we go. Perfect. How sweet is she? Darling, darling. Okay. Now, move this off of here so that I don't accidentally think this is waste. So I am gonna be using this stamp set quite a few times. This is cute. Okay, let's now do our background. Okay, I'm gonna grab an A2 panel and trim that down. Now, A2 is four and a quarter by five and a half. But what I'm going to do is trim that down to four by, oops, there's something on the bottom there. Let's see here. Okay, four by five and a quarter. Yeah, oop, there we go, five and a quarter. Okay, now that's all trimmed down, what I can do is I'm gonna grab a little piece of washi tape and I'm gonna use a little star stencil set that I have. And it's a little layering set. 
So before that though, I should, I should figure out some ink colors. I'm kind of wondering about sunflower, but I want to test that on, on a little scrap piece. So let's grab, I want to kind of color match the, ooh. Well, I don't know about that. I kind of wanted to color match the broom. That is, the broom is a little bit more orange, actually. For fun, I'm going to try Stardust. I don't think it's going to be what I want, but I want to try. Hmm, no. Okay, I'm going to try Spiced Cider and Clementine. Gonna grab some more oranges. Let me try clementine first. And again, everything I use will always be linked down below. Ooh, hold on. We're getting there. Okay, we are getting there. There we go. I like that. Okay, clementine definitely works. Let's double check though for spiced cider. I kind of want spiced cider to work because of just the name of it. I needed to tap that off a little bit more. Oh, Clementine is the winner, but Spice Cider was, was really nice too. Okay, I wanted Spice Cider to win purely because, I don't know, it just is so fall. Okay, so Clementine it is. Let's bring in our first stencil. Now, do these have any kind of indicator on direction? Okay, well, they have the name down here. And let's see about this one. This. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting my stencil here. And because there's two different stencils and they layer, you absolutely could do two colors. What I think I might do is one color and then maybe make the second color lighter. So I'm going to do the clementine actually let me let me grab a little brush here and just really make sure that's nice and clean because that spice cider was a bit darker so i want to make sure that that's off of my brush okay so clementine okay i'm gonna come in really light here and i'm gonna go in top. Okay, I'm going to go in more of a circle. There we go. And Okay, I like I like that. Kind of keep it in that area. Let me add a little bit more and go in I think that's the color I want. And then I think that will be the darker of the two colors. So let's peel this first one off. Oh yeah, I love that. And I love this where they just kind of fade off, but you see this the shape there. Okay, so then we'll bring this one in I think just like that. Oops. Looks good to me. And I'm going to do the same thing. Although, I mean, just that one looks really good. Well, I'm going to I'm going to add the next one, but the next one, I'm not even going to put any ink on my brush and I can see my shape through. And I'm just going to do really light. That way we just get some hints of stars, but maybe it won't be so, you know, full. If that makes sense. Just kind of have them just very lightly there. Okay, so this one was done just with remaining ink on the brush. And let's just let's just take a peek on how that looks. Ooh, I like that. Okay, let's be done. So let me clean off my stencils really quickly and then 
we'll move on. Okay, so here is where we're at so far. I like that. She's cute. It's kind of like she's just flying through the sky. Okay, and before anything else, I think what I'll do is bring my Misty in and let's, let's think about a sentiment. So let's bring this little cutie up. I'm really careful here. Take that tape off. And I'm going to bring this inside my Misty. I think what I want to do is just put the sentiment right on my actual card base. I think that would be really nice. Let me clean this little cutie off. And then let's look at the sentiments. There was one, I liked this. You're all the magic I need. I think that's super cute. Okay, grab that. Now, grab that off. What I wanna do is put her, not on, on the card, but just kind of place her there and then see what I wanna do here. I think I wanna do like right, kind of centered under her. Let's see, do I want her kind of Ooh, no, I like her like this. And then I think it looks center. It looks straight. Yeah, okay, so let's fly her off. And I'm loving the little shadowed stars there. I think that's really pretty. Okay, that is all good to go. Let's condition this down. Being careful though, I don't want to move the stamp just because it's so skinny. Sometimes these little skinny ones, if I go in too much, <laughs> I, I kind of nudge it. Okay, you're all the magic I need. Cute. Oh, that's cute. Okay, I'm going to do one more time just a little bit just to get a good contrast and light cute okay I like that I think that's fun then we can decide what we want to do with her I'm kind of thinking an action wobbler might be way too cute to have her kind of wobbling I think that's the way to go so let's go ahead I'm gonna build the card base and get my panel right onto my card and then we can get the action wobbler out and have some fun with creating some movement with her. Okay, 110 pound cardstock and my little scoreboard here. This is sized at 11 by four and a quarter. And then I'll go ahead and use my little score tool to place a score line at five and a half. There we go, fold that and then Press that down. Okay, card base is made. Now I'll just open that up. I'll bring my little magnets in and let's get some foam tape on the back of the panel here and bump that up. I am coming close to the end with my foam tape. This used to be such a big roll and I have some backup ready to go. But it's always, it's always so crazy to see how quickly one can go through a roll. <laughs> okay, here we are. And do one more. Right there. All right. So, peel these off. And let's see, get that all squared up. Let's put that. Oh, there we go. Okay, that looks very nice. Now I have her. I also have these little action wobblers. These are really fun. And I'm gonna grab one of them. Now I don't believe it matters which side goes on which side, right? You just connect them. So what it is, is you have a little spring there. 
So you're going to attach one side to your element, right? So in this case, it'll be my little witch and then the other side to the card. So again, I don't really think it matters which one goes where. Um, I usually tend to add this side to the card base. I'm not sure why I just, I just do. So I'm going to take this side. I like to use a little weeding tool to get that into place or okay, off, get that off. Okay. And then I'll just place this right on the back like that. Okay. So now what I want to do is I like to first take this off. Okay. I'm going to reveal our adhesive other side and then in order to kind of get it situated I like to take my tweezers and I like to I'm going to try to see if you can see this so right now it's um you know it's boingy <laughs> okay the terms I'm, I'm I'm just I'm tired it's just I don't know it's springy right and the spring is up just like that. But I find it hard to put it on the card that way. So what I like to do is I push this down and I add my tweezers to hold that down. That way it's nice and flat when I'm placing it on my card. Does that make sense? It works for me. So I think there looks great. So I think so, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and place her there. Oh my gosh. How cute is she? Oh my goodness. I love her. So then she just kind of boings. That's so cute. I think that's fun and so appropriate to create a little movement in that way for this card. Okay. I'm going to add a couple little shiny details because I think I love the little starry night background we have, but I think we could add a little twinkle star, if you will, and bring in a little bit of shine. I'm kind of wondering, look at this. This is, oh gosh, what is this? I'll link it down below. I think it's from Simon Says Stamp. Is it called Gilded? I don't know why I don't have this labeled, but it might be Gilded. Let's see how this looks. The thing about the sequins is that it kind of looks different once you put it on the card. So let me get a couple out here and play with it. Let's just see. I'm kind of liking the color, ooh. This is pretty. I think, I think this is it. So I might add maybe a couple here and then here. Let's see though. I kind of want to focus on these more like amber orangey ones. Although this has a hint of the purple in it, which that works so well too. So let's turn this little guy over and Actually, I moved the other two down here and I actually really like that. So I'm going to go ahead and place those right on the card there. I think it's a good way of kind of tying the sentiment into the entire um, design, but also because I don't want to cover up too many of those stars because they're already a little bit covered obviously with her. So I want to kind of preserve that shape and that whole element as well. Okay. There's one and two, and then the remaining three. And she just bobbles in place there. Isn't she cute? I know exactly who I'm going to send this to. And she's going to love it. Okay, there we go. I love that. I think it's really fun. I think it is so kind of whimsical and magical. I think all of the colors worked really well together as well. I'm, I'm happy with the color selection. It was kind of fun to go through some of those inks to really see, you know, where in terms of color, they kind of fall in the rainbow, right? Some are definitely more yellow and definitely more on the, um, orange side. So how cute. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. This was so fun. 
I really enjoyed bringing this together and bringing this to my channel so that you could see a little inspiration as we kick off this fall season. She's just so sweet. Be sure to give this a thumbs up if you did enjoy watching this. Let me know if you're gonna try this or something like this in your own craft room. Those action wobblers are just worth having a little pack of in your craft space because when you need them, they really, really are a great way to elevate a card. All right, I can't wait to see you and continue crafting with you in the next video. I'll see you soon.